Hi, I'm Atbal Cho. In this video, I'm going to explain how we can write a program in Octave or in any other MATLAB clone to numerically solve any first order ordinary differential equation using Euler's method. So before going into the details of writing the program, let us see what is meant by a differential equation and what is meant by solving a differential equation and also we will just look at how this Euler's method works to solve a differential equation. Let this be a curve and described by a mathematical equation y of x that means this is a function of x y is a function of x and if I differentiate this I will get a differential first order differential equation which will be of the form dy by dx and it will be a function of both x and y maybe a function of x or it may be a function of x and y depending upon the form of the equation y of x so what we mean by solution of differential equation is getting back this curve this y of x from this differential equation so note that you will be given only this differential equation and you have to get this y of x back this curve back that is what we call as the solution of a differential equation especially differential solution of a first order differential equation so to solve or to get this curve what you basically need or primarily need is a starting point that is what we call it as the initial condition the starting point is the point where we need to start tracing this curve let us assume that the corresponding x value for the initial value is x naught and the corresponding y value is y naught and of course you will get y as a y of x naught for example if you have this function y of x if you substitute x is equal to x naught then you will get y of x naught that is what is going to be y naught value so x naught and y of x naught or x naught and y naught are called the initial conditions to start with the solution okay now how do we get this points the other points so with this x naught and y naught available to us we need to get the other points on the curve for increasing values of x so what we do in all numerical methods it we will take x values starting from x naught at some very small interval h so that is from x naught we will move to x1 which is equal to x naught plus h where h is a very 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 small value maybe of the order of 0.1 or 0.01 or 0.001 or 0. 0.0001 okay so as you take this h value smaller and smaller the accuracy of the tracing of curve will be more and more so you should set this h value as small as possible so what we will do is as i said we'll start from x naught value and from x naught value we'll move to x1 x1 it at a distance of h from x naught that is x1 is equal to x naught plus h and similarly x2 is equal to x1 plus h or x2 is equal to x naught plus 2h so this is how we will move from x naught 
in the x-axis. As you move in the x-axis, we have to find out corresponding y value also. The y value corresponding to x1, let us take it as y1 and the y value corresponding to x2, let us take it as y2. Please note that even though x0, x1, x2 and up to xn are at equal intervals, y0, y1, y2 need not be at equal intervals and those points will be decided by how the curve moves as x increases. So, our objective is to find out x1, y1, x2, y2 and so on. Okay. Uh, yeah, that is what is explained here. So, the objective is to find out x1, comma y1. It is nothing but x1 is nothing but x0 plus h and y1 is nothing but y of x1 where y of x1 is equal to x0 plus h. And similarly, y2 is equal to y of x2 and that is equal to y of x1 plus h. You will be able to see from here. x2 is equal to x1 plus h. That is what is written here. Okay, so this is what is our objective and up to what point we should do it? Up to xn, up to xn, any value of x you can choose. So as I said, h is a predefined step size in variable x. To get these points, that is what is to get the solution of this differential equation. We have got many methods. All these methods can be classified as explicit method and implicit methods. In explicit methods, using a formula, we can get this points x1, y1 from x0, y0. I mean from x0 and y0 you can directly get the values of x1 and y1 using some formula directly. In implicit methods you cannot get it directly. You will get those points in some indirect way uh, maybe by solving some linear or non-linear equations and thereby it is not direct it is indirect. Those methods we call them as implicit methods. One of the basic explicit method is Euler's method. The formula used in the Euler's method is y of x0 plus h is equal to y of x0 plus h into y dash of x0. Please note y dash of x0 is nothing but dy by dx. Uh, calculated at x0 otherwise y dash stands for dy by dx so what it means is if i know x0 and if i know y0 and if i take a specific h value and if i know this differential equation dy then i can move on to x0 plus h that is nothing but x1 and Please note this Euler's equation or Euler's formula is obtained basically from the Taylor series taking the first order term alone. So therefore, this Euler's method is a first order method. So let us explain this with an example. A differential equation is given dy by dx equal to y ln y by x and you have to solve this differential equation. Solving the differential equation is getting y of x and you have to get the solution from x is equal to 2 second x is equal to 2 to x is equal to 3. Of course the initial conditions have to be given. It is also it is given that the initial value for x is equal to 2 
and the corresponding value of y is equal to e. Therefore, x0 and y0 are given as 2 and e respectively. So, the step 1 is calculating y dash. What is y dash? y dash is nothing but dy by dx because you need y dash in the formula for Euler's method. So, let us say this y dash is a function of x, y and in our problem f of x, y is x comma y is equal to y land y by x. So, since you have got x naught and y naught, now you can calculate y dash of x naught that is nothing but f of x naught comma y naught that you can calculate just by substituting x naught and y naught values in this expression, in the given differential equation expression that is calculated as 1.3591. And we will choose a h value of 0 0.01, that is the step size of 0 0.01. Now we can get this coordinates of the new point that is x1, y1. x1 is nothing but x0 plus h, and that is equal to 2 plus 0 0.01, that is equal to 2.01. And y not y1 you can calculate from the Euler's formula. Euler's formula is y of x0 plus h is equal to y of x0 plus h into y dash of x0. Y0 is known to us the initial condition given that is E and h is 0 0.01. F of x0 y0 was calculated earlier as 1.3591. Substitute those values, you got the point 2 point, you got, you got the point as 2.7319. So, therefore, the new point is x1, y1, that is 2.01 and 2.7319. Now, we will move to step 2. Step 2 is nothing but the repetition of step 1 taking the x1, y1 values as the initial values. Please note that we can calculate the x2, y2 values as we calculated x1, y1 value from x0, y0. See, now we have to assume you know this x1, y1 in the same way as we got x1, y1 from x0 y1, x0 y0, we can get x2 y2 from the knowledge of x1 y1. So, that is the idea. So, we will go for step 2. Again, you have to calculate as you uh, uh, again you have to calculate y dash at the points x1 that is f of x1 y1 you have to calculate using the given function differential equation function y1 ln y1 by x1 is equal to 1.36559. Now you can find out the knee coordinates x2, y2. x2 is equal to x1 plus h, that is x1 is 2.01 and h is equal to 0 0.01, that is 2.02. And similarly, y2 is equal to y into x1 plus h, that is equal to uh, y of x1 plus h into y dash of x1. Only thing is, is we have to replace the x0 in the original equation by x1 and y0 by y1. So, substituting these values, you get 2.75, sorry, 2.7456. So, the new point is x1, x2, y2 is 
2.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
we will execute we will get the values right x1 is equal to 1.01 and y1 is equal to 2.7319 we got the values please note the step 2 is also going to be a repetition of uh, step 1 step 3 is going to be a repetition again of step 1 so step 1 the same step has to be repeated again and again so instead of writing the steps again again and again doing the steps again and again we can put this in a for loop okay so let us do a for loop and for loop has to end okay these three steps have to be repeated so i'll put it in a for loop now the for loop has to vary from x is equal to the x value basically the x values are going to vary right x values should vary from 2 in a step of h to rather than giving the value we will start give the values of x naught x naught at a interval of 0 0.01 that is nothing but h and till what value you have to do it I think we will give that as an input the final value x f is equal to say I want to simulate it up to 3 seconds or 3 x is equal to 3 so this x value also has to vary from x naught to x f at a step size of h okay so we define the for loop uh, uh, values and now I have to uh, do uh, uh, some of the modifications in the code because you know I am going to use the same for loop for finding all the values from x1 to xn and y1 to yn. So therefore if I want to plot all these points I need to store this x1, y1, x2, y2 so on up to xn, yn. Okay? So all these things have to be stored in an array. So let me start with the first value. The first value, so even though we uh, 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 say the first value was x0 and y0, but when we store values in an array, the index of the first element is 1. So I cannot take, take it as x of 0, but rather I have to take it as x of 1. So let me store this x and y values in an array called capital X and capital Y. Okay? The first value in the array that is x1 has to be x0 because it has to start from x0. x0 is the first point. And similarly, y of 1 is equal to y0. So the first point is really the first point of first points, the initial values or the initial point is stored in the array. Okay. And let us say therefore, yeah. Now uh, see when this for loop is executed, this x1 value has to be stored in x of 2 and y1 has to be stored in x of 2 because that is the second value in the array. The first value is x0 and y0. And when the for loop is executed for the second time, this calculated x value has to be stored in x of 3 and calculated value was y has to be stored in y of 3. So therefore, we need to generate some indices so that these calculated values new coordinates can be stored in the array so let me say or let me generate an index k let me start with the value of 1 when this enters this for loop this k value has to increase by 1 every time this k enters this for loop it has to increase the value by 1. So 
I will take it as k is equal to k plus 1. So that in the first round of this for loop, the k value will be 2 and in the second round it will be 2, 3 and so on. Now I can make use of these indices to store the values, the calculated values. Please note that this is f0 corresponds to the previous value and therefore I will put it as k minus 1 whereas this is x of k x1 the current value okay and since the array we have changed to capital X we will replace it with capital letters uppercase letters. So y of k y of k is equal to this. And here y naught goes as y of k minus 1, here also y naught goes changes to y of k minus 1 and here also x changes to k minus 1. Okay. And here also, this is x of k minus 1, y of k minus 1. This is also f of k minus 1 okay now this is no more x1 and y1 now we got an array in capital x and capital y that has to be plotted to get the final solution so we can use the plot function to plot x and y okay so let us run this great so i got the solution this is the curve i wanted this is the solution i wanted from 2 to 3 so in this way if you change the final value you can get up to x is equal to 10. Yeah, from x is equal to 2 to x is equal to 10, you got the solution. Fine. So we learned how to write an octave program for solving a first order differential equation whether it is a linear differential equation or a nonlinear differential equation you can solve by this program using octave or of course you can use any clone of matlab to get the solution please try with some other first order differential equations also thank you